so I, opposite. <laughs> so I did an eye exam with him, mm-hmm. and he says, do you know that you can see type 2 diabetes in the eye two to three, four years before you can see it in a blood test? Wow, how? Wow. Because the vessels in the eye are the smallest vessels in the human body. Huh. You can see blood pressure problems in the eye before you'll see it in a cuff. So when the engine light comes on, most of us try to mask it. Yeah. Here comes my blood pressure's too high. Maybe your nervous system's out of balance. Hmm. Or maybe I'm having digestive issues. Or maybe my sleep is broken. But that's the engine light. Hmm. And so when the engine light comes on, everybody's got to realize that maybe something is off balance and I need to pay attention to it. Yeah. But we don't want to do that. I don't sleep. i got to take melatonin or a sleep aid. Mm-hmm. My blood pressure's too high. I take a diuretic or a calcium channel block or whatever it might be so Mm. so step number one as we get in here you're curious asking better questions but that engine light will come on be intentional on your rest be intentional on uh what you're consuming be intentional on what you're watching who you're listening to who you're around everything comes with intentions rather you know it or not it's all subconscious so just be intentional and what intentional means if you go wake up in the morning and the first thing you're doing is go on your phone Tomorrow, wake up and be like, my intention today, I'm not going to be on my phone. I'm going to give myself some time. I'm going to, you know, speak good things over my life. Be intentional. That's well, and again, you're intentional in the morning. Uh-huh. You're taking your shoes off, staying in the grass, looking mm-hmm. at the sun. Yeah. That's intentional. Intentional for the future, honestly, yeah. Right. It's like you, you, you moving step by step, day by day to something very big. <laughs> Welcome back to another Rusty Eat, Move podcast. Uh, I got Rashawn in the studio with me today. And um, today's conversation, we're going to talk about your body's always talking to you. But before we jump in, just a couple things that's going on in Ontario Living. Um, we have our bars, again, new packaging. We're really excited about that. They're much, I think they're mo- much more moist. We have the kids' cod liver oil coming in um, in the next week and a half. Also, we've been doing lots of uh, organizational training here at our facility. So if you happen to be local or maybe not local, but we bring groups in for a half day, full day, multiple days. So if you're ever interested in coming and having a full immersion learning experience at Ontario Living, we're here to help you along the way. And um, again, we're going to have some conversation today about uh, your health keep score before, I just wanted to bring Rashawn in, and again, just adds a little color to our uh, the conversation today. So is there anything you want to kind of talk about what's going on with you, how things are going with you and your world, and what's happening here in Ontario Living for you or oh, the listeners? Yeah, yeah that would be nice to talk about. Uh, life is great. Everything is going good. Um, I remember a few months ago, I was back on a, uh, this podcast. And I've been doing the same stuff ever since and been seeing my life starting to elevate more and more. The affirmations, the habits building, the eating better, the nutrition, everything's been getting better. And also being here, being around some good energy is also helpful. You know, I got Chris all the time. Like, I kind of look at him as a mentor. Like, you know, he got a lot of knowledge that I feel like a lot of people, like, it's just the questions you got to ask. You know what I'm saying? If you're curious, just ask. And that's what I feel like I can do. So, yeah, everything is good here. Um, we making a documentary or like a mini little documentary with Chris and Matt, you know, how we started um, the company, how y'all started the company and everything. So that's what I'm working on. It's a great little project. But, yeah. Yeah, I watched the documentary and I know you're putting some magic to it, but uh-huh. I, I thought it turned out really good. I mean, you, <laughs> you, 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 we recorded it. And how many minutes do we have total recording? So we recorded Matt and Chris in all had 40 minutes and I brought it down to three. And then now I'm getting it down to two. So it's really interesting. <laughs> it's easy for us to get in there and asking questions. Uh-huh. It's hard for you to edit that thing down from I 40 minutes y'all to all two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to laugh on that. So, But, you know, that's something we've been missing for a long time because mm-hmm. people, they get to know us sometimes, but they really don't know the, the back story, you mm-hmm. know, of what it all uh, began. And, yeah. um, and you said, you know, I'm a bundle of knowledge. Well, again, I've made a lot of mistakes over the years and – been doing this 35 plus years so it's been yeah. a lot of time so That's what anyway thanks for coming and joining us but yeah mm-hmm. i really i know that project is 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 uh i've looked at it already and i'm like i was shocked in how you edited it down already to 
to three minutes, and now you're going back to two minutes. Uh-huh. And that's not easy to do. <laughs> still got to so. add all the B-roll, that stuff to it, man. Yeah. We're gonna and one of the things about Rashawn that many of you do not know, the guy never stops eating. <laughs> so if I come in, and today I, I always tell him I make the world's best oatmeal on the run. So if you've never had oatmeal on the run, it's high in magnesium. It's super man. high in fiber. Yeah. And um, today I added, I got thick rolled oats. I put a little coconut water in. That's kind of the mm. special concoction that my wife Paula kind of, we ran out of uh, almond milk one day, so we used coconut water. Now I like that a lot. Mm. Again, making mistakes. Hey. And I put some pecans in there, frozen blueberries, uh, a little shredded coconut, um, cacao nibs, and uh, a little cinnamon, let it sit overnight. And mm-hmm. that's what I, so I asked Rashawn today, I said, Rashawn, you want any, he just had a smoothie, just already got done eating, yeah, drinking right. a smoothie. <laughs> yeah, you want any oatmeal? Of course. So hey, anyway, can, it's always turn fun to down, man. Feed, feed these stallions that are never full uh-huh. and um, they're super fit and super healthy. So anyway, mm-hmm. so I want to begin the conversation again. You can jump in anytime. For sure. But medical, I, this is the conversation I get on a regular basis, almost daily, that people want to know about their blood work or whatever. Mm. But this is going to be a series. So if you want to share this, again, as this goes on, but this is going to be called Your Health Keeps Score. And I want to begin, the, the first part is about your body's always talking to you. So if you want to write something down, that's where I want you to begin. Your body's always talking to you. But we need to learn how to listen. We've never been taught how to listen. Hmm. So when you think about this, step number one, and your body's always talking to you, is you have to ask better questions. And you've heard us talk about this before if you listen to our podcast. But when you ask better questions, you start revealing the answer. So it's always interesting to me when I walk into a large store, a traditional grocery store, hmm. and you look at the digestive aisle, and it's two blocks long. And you got to ask the question, why, when the body has acid reflux, do we want to mask it? Again, nobody wants to acid reflux, but you take a Tums or a Prilosec, or maybe it's a medication like a Nexium. But reality is, when I have acid reflux, th- something's out of balance. Hmm. So step number one, when you, if you have a headache, you don't have an ibuprofen f- deficiency or an anti-inflammatory deficiency. There's something talking back to you. Many times you're dehydrated or lacking omega-3 fats or lacking the mineral magnesium. So step number one in this conversation is being curious and asking better questions. Mm. And we've never seen more medical illiteracy than we do today. So we're not really going to talk about blood work today, know your numbers. We'll get into that. Again, if you go to our website, one of the downloads is called Know Your Numbers. Mm. And again, in my latest book, Rest, Eat, Move. I have two chapters. One is decoding your, on Decoding Your Health, which we're going to talk about, and then Know Your Numbers, but that's all there. That book fire, by the way. I got my grandma reading that. She already learned it so much. <laughs> yeah, and, she love it. you know, it's interesting. This morning, I was working out, and I was listening to the audio, yeah. and in the audio of the, the Know Your Numbers and the Decoding Your Health, and I'm like, wow, this is some good information here. Mm. So it kind of just kind of rejuvenated me to kind of like talk more about it. Mm. So I'm going to begin with this. So again, we're talking about curiosity, asking better questions, but imagine you're cruising down the highway and your car engine light comes on. What would you do? You're going you're gonna to be a little, you're going to be like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? How many, of you, how many people will hope the engine light goes off? Shoot, I hope it goes off. I know I, it, I, know <laughs> I do. I'm to take it to the Because I, I am not a mechanical guy. Uh-uh. So when the engine light comes on, most of us try to mask it. Yeah. Here comes my blood pressure's too high. Maybe your nervous system's out of balance. Hmm. Or maybe I'm having digestive issues, or maybe my sleep is broken. But that's the engine light. Hmm. And so when that engine light comes on, everybody's got to realize that maybe something is off balance, and I need to pay attention to it. Yeah. But we don't want to do that. I don't sleep. i got to take melatonin or a sleep aid. Mm-hmm. My blood pressure's too high. I take a diuretic or a calcium channel block or whatever it might be. So mm. so step number one, as we get in here, you're curious, asking better questions, but that engine light will come on. It comes on for all of us. My knee's hurting me. Mm-hmm. Or my neck's not working right. Or my back doesn't have the flexibility. But my hamstrings, I use my me as an example. So Jill Marlin was on our podcast a while back. She's one of the top physical therapists I've ever come in contact with. Mm-hmm. And when I met her, when I went to see her, I've had chronic hamstring problems, my left hamstring play games, 
play sports, whatever. But my limiting factor always is that my hamstring sometimes will, you know, go out. And so she says to me, back to the body, so I was talking to you, yeah. you don't have a lot of mobility in your S1, L5. So in my back, I didn't have that mobility, so I had this lack of coordination. So when I started speeding things up, the body's not talking or not communicating the way it should be. Mm. I never thought about that. I need mm. to stretch my hamstrings more. How did you feel when she said S1, L2, 5? So when she said S1, L5, oh, she L5, said, yeah. this is your back. Uh you don't have a lot of back mobility, flexibility. Yeah. So, you know, and I kind of knew a little bit about right. that, you know, but when she got in there and she did some nerve, she, she did a, a couple uh, uh, where you hit your knee and you're looking at, you've seen the hammer when the oh, hammer yeah, knees yeah, yeah. and you're looking at the goes. reflex. Uh-huh. I didn't have the same reflexes in my left knee that I had in my right. Uh-huh. It was instantly she knew that the body's not, the coordination Well, again, think about how the spine works. The spine innervates to everything, calf muscles, hamstrings, the list goes on. Yeah. So now, instead of keep stretching your hamstrings or, you know, doing massage, which is all great, let's go after the source of the problem, and that's your back. Right. So as I started doing spinal decompressions, and we'll show some more of this stuff, you and I are going to do some videos on this coming up. Mm -hmm. But I started doing these hip circles, spinal decompressions, my back got better. Well... Hence, my hamstring's getting better. So that's step number one. And it's always interesting to me, when you look at the body talking back to you, I always like to begin with the eyes. Mm. Have you had an eye exam in a while? I just had one. What? Was that Monday? Monday, Uh right? So for most people, they don't get an eye exam, but in the eyes, they show up many things. So one of my good buddies is Dr. Ed Peters up in St. John's, and him and his two sons have this amazing practice, Avery Eye Care. And when I went out to see him years ago, and he's always talking to me, you know, you can see, I, when I play golf, I can see a long ways away. And mm-hmm. he said, at some point in time, you're going to have, you're not going to be able to see up close. So again, I have, I have readers now, but I can see you really clear. Yeah. But at some point in time, the eye is going to change. Yeah, lucky you. So I, the opposite. <laughs> so I did an eye exam with him. Mm-hmm. And he says, do you know that you can see type 2 diabetes in the eye two to three, four years before you can see it in a blood test? Wow, how? Because the vessels in the eye are the smallest vessels in the human body. Uh. You can see blood pressure problems in the eye before you'll see it in a cuff. So it's interesting how the eyes are a a mirror of what's going on. Uh. So step number one, when you think about your body's always talking to you, begin with the eyes. Because that Uh. is a really, and getting an eye exam every so often really can tell you a lot what's going on. And so we did slides of macular degeneration a normal eye, high blood pressure, diabetes. And you could see all the differences in the eyes Mm. just by doing that that eye exam. So eyes are a big deal. And then teeth. Mm. When you think about teeth, and when you go to your dental hygienist, you can never lie to your dental hygienist. Right. So when the gums are not healthy or the teeth are not healthy, it kind of shows up. So that's another indication. And so when I talk to my dental hygienist, I'm always curious and like, hey, walk me through some of these things right here. Whether it's flossing, you know, you can't lie to your dental hygienist about flossing. Right. <laughs> because if you do, it's like anything else, like triglycerides, they show up very quickly. So yeah. teeth is a big deal, <laughs> teeth and gums. And years ago, there was a doctor named Dr. Weston Price. Mm-hmm. And Weston Price was back in the 30s. And he was looking at, when he would go to other, you know, communities, other countries, and he would compare apples to apples, he could see a lifestyle of one community versus a lifestyle of the other Hmm. just by the teeth and the gums. So he was one of the first uh, doctors in the world to really look at teeth and gums as overall health. Hmm. So when you think about teeth and gums, that's a great indication. And again, that's why we all want to make sure we're seeing our dentists on a regular basis and dental hygienists because the teeth and gums show so much. And we all know this too. It's crazy. As we age, when you see a really healthy eye as we age, you know, I always look at my clients when I see them for the first time. I'm always want to look, I'm looking at their skin. I'm looking at their eyes. I'm looking at all that because that's a great indication of overall health. Again, ba- the body's talking back to you. Mm-hmm. So then we move into breath. Have you ever, have you ever thought about breath before? Like breath being a, a way that the body's talking back to you? No. Not at all. Honestly, just 
just just breathing just how I want so it. So sometimes to. you know you hear, hey, I got bad breath or whatever, but mm-hmm. the future diagnostics is going to be breath. I mean, we can do a breathalyzer for alcohol and all that stuff, but we now know that one of the future diagnostics besides blood tests is a breath. Oh, you talking about actually like a smell of the breath? So you can smell in the in the breath. You can actually oh, okay, you're okay. actually testing the breath, not the breathing, oh, but the okay, breath I itself. So the breath is a great indicator of... And I definitely didn't know about health. that. And uh-huh. so, when, so when you think about some of these diets today, uh-huh. as you cut carbohydrates out of the body, your body moves very acidic, uh-huh. and the breath is going to change very quickly. Wait, because isn't this um, in ketosis or something like that? If you yeah, so when you get in ketosis, it leads into acidosis. Uh-huh. So I remember back in the day when I would work like 14, 15-hour days at butternut bread, you know, no sleep, crushing it, getting killed... Mm-hmm. And I would come home, and my my wife would say, "You got that, you got that breath," <laughs> and that breath would be that acetone breath. It was wow. like a stress breath. Wow. And so we're body moves too acidic. We're not getting enough rest, not getting enough recovery. Mm-hmm. You know, we're eating unhealthy foods, too much caffeine. The list goes on. Le- too much protein, not enough carbohydrates. The body's bre- the breath starts to change. Mm. So the point of this podcast today is like, okay, it's not just blood tests. It's also the other ways the body's talking back to you, and one of them is, is breath. Wow. So again, most people have not heard much about that before, but breath is going to be the future. Next five years, breath is going to be more and more, especially with all the wearables and stuff that we're coming out. You're going to see yeah. that for breath. You can measure metabolic rates. You can measure lots of things, and breath is one of them. Wow. One of my favorite things to talk about is digestion. So when you think about your body talking back to you, I mentioned this earlier why do we have all this digestive health issues in the United States? Everybody's talking about the microbiome, mm-hmm. the gut is the garden. What's going on with that digestion? Oh, and one of the things sure. I like to talk about digestion is this, mm. is elimination. So if I ask you, Rashawn, and this is called the bulls, mm-hmm. B-U-L-L-S, how, mu- how often should you have a bowel movement? That's the first B. That's the bowel. And my guess, I would say morning and night. Okay, mm-hmm. so you would recommend probably should have two bowel movements a day. Yeah. Okay. How many people? So when I sit down with a client for the first oh, time, I, you. <laughs> I ask them how many bowel movements do you have a day, and they look at me like, "What? What are you talking about?" I'm like, "No, I want to know how many bowel movements you have a d- per day," and most of them will say once or twice a day, sometimes three. Mm. Once in a while, I'll get a person that comes in and says, "I eliminate." with a bowel movement maybe every three or four days. Ooh. And I would think to myself, you know, Man, if you have a dog up. at home <laughs> and your dog doesn't have a bowel movement every day, you'd probably take your dog to the vet. Uh-huh. But it becomes normal for people. Yeah. You know, so when you think of a bowel movement, you should have it multiple times a day, usually, you know, one, two, three times a day, and it should look like a soft banana. Hmm. So as you're listening to this podcast right now, one of the greatest indicators of digestion and gut health is a bowel movement, mm. and it should look like a soft banana two to three times a day. Mm. And if you don't have that, and people all the time, I'm constipated, I have diarrhea, that means the body's out of balance. Huh. So if you're constipated, I remember back in the day watching uh, Lawrence Welk with my grandmother. She loved lo- watching Lawrence Welk. This is way before your time. Yeah, I, I hated that. watching Lawrence Welk. <laughs> but I remember they would drink this blue bottle of milk of magnesium. So milk of magnesia, and you start thinking, why are these seniors drinking that milk of magnesia? And then they're smiling. Well, it was an advertisement for constipation because magnesium is a mineral relaxation. Oh, it helps yeah. with bowel movements. Gotcha. So when you're having a bowel movement that's moving too quickly, or maybe it's too moving too slowly, the body's talking back to you. And then the, the U is your urine. your urine. Urine should look like Chardonnay, not too dark, not too light. Mm-hmm. One of my colleagues way back in the day, Matthew Cross, used to always talk about your, your urine should look like Chardonnay. And that's exactly right. It just has a slight color to it. Mm-hmm. If it's too dark, I'm dehydrated. And if it's too light, I'm probably overhydrating mm-hmm. or not eating enough food. Mm-hmm. I and even th- heard something about uh, if, you, um, if your urine has too much bubbles, that means you are consuming too much protein. It could be. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, again, the body is eliminating and, and, it, and it's definitely talking back to you. Mm-hmm. The, the other, the L, the first L is your lymphatic system. Mm. And so you want to keep the lymphatic system clean. 
And an easy way to do that is, you know, hear people talking about massage or uh, infrared saunas, daily movement, especially with your arms. Yeah. That helps keep the lymphatic system clean. And the other piece is you don't want to b- block the lymphatic system. And a big part of the lymphatic system is your armpits. Mm. And so one of the things we always address down the road is that make sure you're not using a deodorant that has aluminum chlorhydrate. I just so make sure. Yes, so it's get crazy. yourself a deodorant that has no aluminum chlorhydrate, and you can do that at pretty much anywhere, health food stores. But no more blocking agents, no more antiperspirants mm-hmm. that blocks the lymphatic system from breathing. So we want that lymphatic system. That's the sewer system of the body. You want the lymphatic system to breathe. That's why water is so good. That's why massage is good. And then from there, the second L is lungs. Mm. So now we're using the diaphragm. We're breathing. We're getting outside. We're exercising. These things all help that body eliminate, so the lungs eliminate. And the last one is called the skin. That's the S. So it's B-U-L-L-S. And the skin is the largest organ in the human body, but that skin always works from the inside out. Mm. The body heals from top to bottom, inside out. So when the skin's not healthy, Mm. probably we're not healthy. And that was me growing up. I had terrible skin, but it was all based on my diet. Too much soda pop too much Kool-Aid, hmm. you know, milk. So even eczema. Tons of psoriasis, eczema. Uh. So when people have skin issues, they want to put something on it. Yeah. That could be helpful, but the body heals from inside out. So am I drinking enough water? Do I have an omega-3 fats? You know, all that. So the point of this podcast today is we want to make sure that we're starting to recognize that if I do have these things, yeah, something's out of balance. Dandruff is a big... You know, I never knew that. I just have a dandruff shampoo. So when I was a kid growing up, you know, I had, I had psoriasis, eczema, dandruff. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I was, when I changed my diet, everything got better, but I didn't really understand that ever before. So is, is everybody noticing how all this stuff is suppressing instead of healing? So we get like these different things. You just said it. You get dandruff, you get dandruff. Uh, yeah, you get like head and shoulder shampoo. Right. You, you, you basically are suppressing what's going on but it's still not being fixed correct huh you're exactly right if uh-huh. i have acid reflux i take some type of acid blocker mm. if i have skin problems i put some if i have acne i get an acne med mm. but rea- reality is your probably hormones are you know out a little out of balance or you're you know going through puberty or whatever but as time goes on if i have eczema psoriasis dandruff mm. Again, not we're not taught this stuff. Right, we're just sweeping it under the rug. That's and what this we're is, being taught. And this is chapter thirty-two in my Rusty Move book. I oh. talk a lot about body care, what you put on your body, is what goes in the body. So again, we're not spending too much time going deep there, but just mm-hmm. recognizing digestion, right. the bowls is a big deal. The other thing I want to just touch briefly on is again, energy. So if I said, "Hey, Rashawn," mm-hmm. if, if we said, "Hey, one of the greatest," Things we could have on a regular basis is not more time, it's more energy. So imagine, think about if you could have consistent, great energy every day. It's like the greatest commodity ever, yeah. right? Thanks. So if I ask you on a 1 to 10 scale, how would you rate your energy, what would that be? Recently, when I started um, sleeping better and eating the right foods, i say right now 8.5 out of 9, or 8, 8.5 to 9, it fluctuates. It's, it's good. Yeah. And if you ask most people how are their energy, you know, they've never been asked that. Yeah. But then the second question would be is are you manufacturing your energy? Mm-hmm. Or are you, so again, we're a world of caffeine. Mm-hmm. And then we have energy drinks. I always tell people like I can't imagine you can't get through your day without an energy drink or a pot of coffee. So if you so, feel like your energy level is bad, it doesn't, it doesn't come from manufacturing it. we got to ask the question, how do we build and how do we protect our energy? So how would you build your energy? I'm going to put y'all on game real fast. Look, so this is how I look at it. So even in the mornings, I look at the sun as almost like a, like it's like I'm a candle and it's like a fire, like a fire, fire to me. So I normally take my, so- my shoes, my socks, and I stand in the grass. And that's called grounding. So I know some people may know, some people may, may not know about it, but I feel like from my perspective and how what I've been through so far, it's been increasing my energy and increase, increasing my mental health 
and then sitting in the sun, getting that vitamin D, that energy, that's great. Sleeping, um, protecting my energy from bad environments, from people who are kind of like, eh, I don't really care for real. That's going to rub off on you. So I just feel like those things right there has definitely has been a complete change in my energy, really. Like well, and what you said earlier about grounding, if you're not familiar with the grounding, again, you're kind of getting your feet. And again, you, you don't have to ground outside in the grass. Yeah. Because in Michigan in the wintertime, we probably don't want to be. But, but the more you can <laughs> do, yeah. but the more you can do that, even in the wintertime, yeah. that is grounding because you're just going to wake up all your senses. Uh-huh. But you could even ground a little bit on carpeting with your bare feet. But the sun, as you mentioned earlier, is just gold. It is, for sure. So that's a fantastic morning ritual. Again, morning sunlight is really optimal. But that's mm-hmm. a great way to get your energy. The other thing you mentioned is, you know, I'm really being more intentional about my sleep and recovery and stress yeah. and surrounding myself with more energetic, you know, people versus, mm-hmm. you know, I always call them the, you know, the dark clouds because <laughs> we've all come in contact with this before. Yeah. Um and the, th- the other thing, too, is water. As simple as water is, uh-huh. about 95% of people come to emergency room visits are dehydrated. Mm-hmm. And a big part of that dehydration is I'm not drinking enough water. Hence, the body's going to go after water through your blood, and then my, blood's gonna, my blood volume goes down and my energy goes down. So that's kind of the science behind why I want to make sure I'm hydrated. And then, and then you got to look at what you're eating, yeah. how often you're eating, when you're eating, what yeah. are you eating. So if you're eating a bunch of processed foods, no wonder our blood sugar level goes up and then it comes right back down. Plus, it's just fake energy. Like you, It's fake energy. It's, it's, that's how I look at it. It's just fake energy. So you fake energy, it. manufactured energy, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So again, too much caffeine, too much energy dra- drinks, too much fake energy foods, mm-hmm. right? I get the fake energy for a minute, feels okay for a second, and yeah, then it yeah, then crashes it's and yeah, it's then I got to go get more of it. Uh-huh. So. I think energy is always a good thing to ask yourself on a 1 to 10 scale. How's my energy? Yeah. That, and if it's consistently feeling like it's under a, a 6 or a mm-hmm. 7, how do I improve that? Yeah. I also want to say something, too. I know a lot of people that's probably even listening to this. They probably be on their computers a lot. I'm on my computer a lot. I'm editing, and that's draining, too. Like, you know, if you stand just staring at a computer, that could be draining. What I try to do is when I start to feel a little tired or when I start to feel that way, then I change. I get to moving around. I go. I might take a walk. I might go outside, stand in the sun. If I can't stand in the sun, it's wintertime. I try to at least just move around just a little bit, get my body moving. Because when you don't move, there is no energy. Like, we all got to remember that. We just sitting in one spot. Your energy in your body is not moving at all. It's just zero energy. So you wonder why you feel sluggish. Maybe you need to just bounce that Absolutely. vibration a little bit. And again, as you just mentioned it, Take mm-hmm. some micro breaks. Yeah. And that real. micro break could be a quick stretch break, could be outside, go for a little walk. But, you know, again, big part of energy is obviously movement. Motion creates positive emotion. So mm-hmm. you're exactly right. When I'm feeling like I need a little break, I might go take a, you know, a five minute nap or mm-hmm. I close my eyes and work on my diaphragmatic breathing or I'll go outside or do all of the above. That's but I think during I think during the day we don't spend enough time doing these little micro breaks to help us replenish our energy right we get drained and we just like go full in you can't do that because so the next thing you know here comes more caffeine yeah you know and i'm drinking caffeine in the afternoon and then i'm not sleeping at night yeah and you can see how this vicious cycle takes over so energy is a big deal the other thing too so so again i'll go a quick really review here eyes was one Mm. teeth and gums was two breath was three I, I kind of jumped over sleep, but sleep is number four. So, again, if you're not sleeping, you're probably not going to have great energy. You're not going to have good health. You're not going to have good hormones. Hmm. But today's point is, like, I'm being more, if my sleep is not where I want it to be, got to step back and say, okay, what do I need to do to improve my sleep? We yeah. talked about g- digestion elimination, the bulls. Number six was energy. Are we manufacturing? Are we building it, protecting it? And now we're on number seven, which is your muscles, tendons, ligaments, connective tissue. But again, I mentioned this earlier, like I had a hamstring issue, but when I have back pain or knee pain or hip pain or whatever, that's a great indication that something's out of balance. Mm -hmm. And so when people have back problems... You know, or whatever it might be, neck issues. Um, we just had one of the 
uh, PGA Tour players come in here, and we went over to he went over to see uh, Jill Marlin, the therapist. Okay. And he was having problems with his bicep in his kind of an elbow area when he was swinging the golf club. In reality, it was coming from his neck. Mm. So once she started working on his neck, everything started getting better. Wow. So that's why when your body's talking back, you just got to be a, like a little private investigator and figure out what, what's actually happening. But I love talking about that. You know, my body aches all the time. What does that feel like? Where does it, where does it, is it just a chronic ache? Right. Or is it a specific ache? When I get up in the morning, I can't bend over and tie my shoes or put my socks on. Mm. Well, if you're having that issue, body's talking back to you again. Right. So for me, that was me. I'd go play paddle ball or pick a ball or play golf or work out, whatever. And the next morning I'd get up and I'd have to put my socks on. And I'm like, what the heck? I'm 65 years old, but I'm having trouble putting my socks on if I'm not lubed up. Well, now as my spine gets more mobile, it doesn't bother me a bit. Wow. So I think that's what we have to understand too with your muscles. Can you touch your toes? Mm. You know, can you do some of that wall posture we talked about. What's my posture look like? These yeah. are all ways. I had a guy in this morning, and we got him against the wall, and he was a full fist from his head to the wall. And you knew right away his head's real forward. Yeah. By the time we were done, he was probably the width of my hand, and he had improved like three or four inches because now he started working on the mobility, flexibility of his neck and his back, which led to more mobility of his shoulders and his, his head. So again, wow. muscles, connective tissue, again, if it's something's out of bo- balance, the big thing to take away today too is also the body has the ability to heal and self-correct. It will get better. Yeah. You know, a handful of years ago, I go over and see Walt Reynolds. Many people have heard me talk about him before. He's a fantastic uh, trainer. I've known Walt for many, many years, great friend. And the guy is like a genetic freak. He was an Olympic caliber high jumper, and still today, in his, I think he's close to 60 or maybe 61, but the guy can move like, like no, he looks like he's 25. He moves fantastic. Oh, okay. So when I think I'm doing pretty good, I just go over to see him, <laughs> and he raises my bar. Oh. And so we're training one day together, and I used to train with him probably once a month, and I've known him for a long time, over 30 years. And we go in there, and he says, you know, he was talking about my lower back not having great mobility. But we're doing squatting, and I was doing squatting with my ankles, my toes being up. He goes, where's your limiting factor? I said, well, I think my limiting factor is my knee. I had ruptured patella tendon, got three screws in my knee. When I'm playing golf, I look at a putt. It's hard for me to squat down. He looks at me, and he goes, do you want to get better? (laughs) <laughs> I said, well, you don't understand. I have three screws in my knee or whatever. And I said that to him like three times. Finally, he hit me right in the head. He says, stop. Do you want to get better? I said, yeah. He yeah. said, I think a big part of your mobility of your knee is you don't have any mobility, flexibility of your ankle. Hmm. So he got me on the floor, and he had me kneel. And we do this show, this exercise. It's a restorative movement for your knees and your ankles and your feet. And he got me on the floor. And I could not put my feet flat. When I was kneeling down, I could not put my ankles flat to the floor. It was killing me. Hurt my knee, hurt my ankles. And today, I can do this. I can sit there for hours at a time. doesn't bother me. But he said to me, do you want to get better? And I said, yeah. So anyway, I started doing these movements over time, which led to a lot more mobility, flexibility in my ankle, which led much more mobility, flexibility in my hips and my knees. So again, I, I wasn't even like, oh, that, you know, I don't understand. I got a knee, yeah, yeah, got right. a knee problem. I got screws in the knee. But reality is, no, that actually got a lot better. So that's an exercise I show almost everybody is really working on our extremities. How do we move on mobility, flexibility? But that's part of the connective tissue. So if you feel like your body's aching, you can't move the way you want to, there's a lot of cool things you can do about that. That's what's up. So number eight, we're getting close to the end. We got 10 of these. Mm-hmm. Number eight is bone health. So if I asked you, what's the number one way to improve bone health, what would you say off the top of your head? Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Calcium. Calcium. Mm-hmm. So how do people get more calcium in their diet? That's a very good question. So most people, when they think of bone health, so bones are live tissue, live, live structure, that everybody thinks of vitamin D, calcium. Mm-hmm. How do I do that? Well, the reality is you don't want to take calcium supplementation. Mm-hmm. You don't want to consume more cow's milk unless it's 
not pasteurized. Right. And so again, if I'm getting raw cow's milk, which is, you know, it's hard to find and sometimes against the law, depending where you're at. But the goal is understanding that the bone is live and what you really need to do is consume calcium foods and magnesium foods, because magnesium helps absorption of calcium. Mm. On top of that is vitamin D. And you said that earlier. How do you get your vitamin D? Sun. The sun. Mm-hmm. I'm in that thing, 30 minutes minimum. And the second way to get vitamin D is the cod liver oil. Yep. So when you put those two together yep. and you bring calcium foods, like anything greens, I thought this was interesting years ago in one of my books, earlier books, I was looking at bone health. And I was looking at these, one of the largest farming of uh, eggs in the country is in Petula, California. Mm. And I was looking at what the farmers were feeding the ch- chickens to make the shell of the egg harder. Because, you know, if you go to a health food store and you get, you know, cage-free organic eggs, yeah. the shell of the egg is much and if you bought some cr- crummy eggs at whatever, and you barely touch it, it shatters, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I started thinking, how does the chickens lay healthier eggs? It's what the farmers feed the chickens. Mm. And the farmers aren't feeding the chickens cow's milk. The farmers are feeding the chickens kale and spinach and anything high in, in greens and chlorophyll. So one of the greatest ways to improve your bone health is consuming foods high in greens, almonds, mm. Kale, spinach, broccoli, wheatgrass, spirulina, corral. This is all ways to do that. And then if you bring magnesium foods to the party, mm-hmm. that's going to be most of your fruits, dates, figs, raisins, cacao nibs, coconut, oatmeal. Now you have greater absorption of the calcium. You throw some strength training on top of that. Ooh, good to go. Now you got some good bone health. Uh-huh. So now you have an idea what to share with your with your mom or oh, you know yeah. your sister or to have healthy bones, because many women are concerned about it, but men should be concerned about it too. For sure. All right, the last two here. If I said, Rashawn, skin, hair, and nails, how do you make your skin, hair, and nails better? Cod liver oil. Cod liver oil? Yeah. That's just cod liver oil, vitamin D. Um, that's all I got right now. And again, skin. body heals skin is yeah, skin. eating live foods. I, I, I will also say lemon water, too, for skin. Too. Water, lemon Vitamin water, C. yeah, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So when you look at healthy skin, as you just mentioned, a lot of it has to do with hydration. Mm. So when the skin is not hydrated, I used to tease my dad this. My dad was never, he was a coffee drinker. Mm. We'd go play golf, and i go, Dad, it's like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Have you had any water today? He'd say, yeah, I have my coffee. <laughs> I go, Dad, we can't count your coffee as water. Man. So I'd pinch his <laughs> index finger to his thumb, and I would pinch that together. Yeah. And when you pinch that together and it downs and bounces back, you're dehydrated. Wait, you have thumb? So, so right here, take your thumb and your oh. index finger, and the space between there, just pinch that skin. Okay. And if it bounces right back, so my dad's skin, I would pinch this, and it would be stuck for like, three or four minutes Whoa. it would barely even move i mean Whoa. it should bounce right back that's crazy craziness right yeah so i always tease him and i'd come over I'd give me your hand i'd give his hand give i'd pinch his he goes leave me alone i'm like dad you gotta just drink make me a little happier drink a little bit more water <laughs> so a great indicator of your skin is how hydrated you stay huh. and then more live foods because as the gut gets healthier your skin gets better i see so when you see the skin as we talked about earlier when the skin, the nails, and the nails, I remember having an 83-year-old woman way back in the day. She was a dancer, and she was so, and she said to me, she comes in one day, and she called me, honey. She said, honey, I got to tell you, my nails have never grown faster. And I said, well, a big part of that is I have you do, you're taking your omega-3 fats, and the omega-3 fats are one of the raw materials to help skin, nail, and hair. Hmm. Now, when you think about it, how do you get, you got great hair. I had a woman yesterday, I played in a golf out, and she said, I don't know, but you're old, but you have good hair. I go, hey, thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) But a big part of hair is minerals. Yeah. Because that's what they put in shampoo. And so when you think about healthy hair, healthy skin, healthy nails, it has all to do with what you eat, drink. So again, when you really want to have better hair, it's not always buying that shampoo with all the minerals in it. Again, that could be very effective. Again, when you're looking at, you know, body care products, you want to have healthier, you know, toothpaste, healthy 
uh, soaps, healthy um, shampoos. But a big part of that is what are you eating? And that's why the wheatgrass is so powerful because wheatgrass is high in minerals. Yeah. And when you put chlorophyll in the body, you're generally going to have greater minerals and, and better hair, um, skin and nails. All right, last one is body weight. So I always try to talk to people about when I sit down with them is what, what would be a realistic body weight that you could sustain 24 hmm. seven. So for you, how much do you weigh? I weigh 200, 200. Mm-hmm. And where do you want to be? 200, 195 in that area. So you're kind of like pure muscle though. in that area. Yep. So I yeah. You there. don't really have any fat on you anyway. So, no, so I have to get there. I want to get there. But like, you're right. You want to be right in that 200 range 24 uh-huh. seven. Mm-hmm. So if you fast forward, you're 25. Mm-hmm. You're 50. How much do you want to weigh? Probably, I'm going to say 190, 195. So somewhere in the same. Maybe you don't have as much muscle mass, but right, pretty similar, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, so, probably less than that. So I'm right with you. So at 65, ideally, I don't want to be heavier mm-hmm. because as I'm heavier, it's harder for me to move. It's not as healthy for me. So my number, ideally for me, is between 170 and 175. Once I get above 180... I got to get busy mm. because 180 is not cutting it. Mm. So my always indication, like I call it the whistle. The whistle is a number that I hit that now I need to get busy. Because we all, it's not about being perfect. We ebb and flow. So in a perfect world, 170, 175. But when I start getting the 175 to 180, yeah. and 180 is the whistle. Okay, <laughs> All right, enough of the... You're eating too much. You're not eating the right stuff or whatever. Yeah, so, so everybody needs to have a whistle. Yeah. And then they need to find a weight that's, that's realistic. Because I find more and more people like, hey, I want to lose, you know, I want to get down to 180 and they weigh 240. I'm like, oh, let's just work on getting under 200 and see if we can stay there. So what's realistic, what's optimal, yeah. what's sustainable. Mm-hmm. So I think body weight's a big deal because people are like, hey, you know, get a belt, get a pair of pants. You know, belts, pair of pants don't lie. Right. So if you get a pair of pants or a belt <laughs> or a dress or whatever it is, those are tools. You don't always have to get on the scale, but to me, you want to be aware of what you are weighing. And usually I recommend people weighing themselves once a week. Hmm. Don't have to be obsessive about weighing every day or, you know, a body count. The mirror doesn't lie. The, the belt and the pants don't lie. So these are easy ways to along that. But think about that. Can you sustain that body weight? Yeah. And the last couple things in here, a kind of a little bit on, uh, is... Just some things I'm going to throw out there about your body's talking back to you, but one of them is grip strength. Uh. So all my clients coming in here, I have them stand on a pad so their feet are touching the floor, Mm -hmm. and they're going to put their hands up on the the rack, and they're going to grab on being supported. So I said, okay, here's the deal. Can you do that with your feet on the ground? And they're like, yeah, I can do that. Okay. So number two... I'm going to move the pad up a little higher. Now we're going to bend your knees a little bit, and you're going to take a little bit of weight off your feet and put more weight in your hands. They're like, how's that? I can do that. And then from there, as they get more comfortable, can you actually hang from the bar with nothing t- and your feet aren't touching the ground? Huh. It's crazy. You don't even think about this over time at your age, but so many people, when they hit 50, can't hang. Wow. So they don't have the grip strength. They don't have the arm strength. They can't hang. You think it's because they don't like work out as often, or you think? Oh, it's for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. They don't have that grip strength. So again, it's a great way to in, in, engage. Like, what's your? Can you hang from a bar unsupported? Yeah. So to me, as I get older, that's one of my bars. If, can I hang when I'm 85? Hmm. That's always going to be my bar. I'm not saying I'm doing pull-ups, but can I hang? You can just hang, right? Yep. And again, it could be whatever fitness level you are. Yeah, I still want to do pull-ups and push-ups and all that kind of stuff. But a simple strength exercise, can you hang from the bar unsupported? Now, if you're trying to raise your bar up higher, yeah, how much pull-ups can you do? Which Can you do a perfect push-up? You know, that's the thing we look at is like, can you do a perfect push-up? Can you do a perfect pull-up? Those could be other metrics. Can you do a perfect squat? You know, those are strength exercise. The other big one is balance. Mm -hmm. I find so many people... Try, try this when you're talking to your friends, family. Yeah. But can they do some of these, you know, Warrior Three, Half Moon, Unsupported? Can they stand on one leg? Mm. Simple, easy movements right away. Leg swings. You know instantly, like, 
oh my gosh, I don't have any balance. Right. So when I do live events, I did a live event uh, this yesterday, and I had the group getting up and standing on one leg. Yeah. Leg, legs are swinging. You should have seen them. They're laughing. They're, but a lot of them, they're having a heck of a time balancing. So, again, as we age, we lose mobility, flexibility, and balance and wow. strength. Wow. Mobility, touching the toes, you know, certain exercises. Again, mobility is a big thing we lose as we go. What's your heart rate? So, if I ask you, you know what you, do you know your heart rate right now? No. So we need to understand that for you, it's not a big deal right now at your age, but what is your resting heart rate? Yeah, I need to know that. No, that's important. And so for most people, we got your resting heart rate under 60. I just got my colonoscopy on Monday. So I go there and, you know, nobody really needs to know more about that. But I go there and, <laughs> you know, the nurse says, hey, your resting heart rate's at 42. Hmm. And she said, you have, a, you have symptoms. I'm like, no, I don't have symptoms. But that's a great indicator as you age, your heart rate doesn't have to go up. So if you have a lower resting heart rate, generally, you're going to have more fitness. You're going to be mm-hmm. a little more efficient. How many breaths do you take per minute? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about the breath itself, but how many actually breaths do you take per minute? So we're going to get into that more next time when we get into know your yeah. numbers. And But these are just ways to, to understand that. And then um, last couple here before we sign off, I want to ask everybody, do you like the pace of your life? And I spend a lot more time with people recently in groups when I talk to them. Do they really like the pace of their life? And do they have the space in their life to handle the pace? Hmm. So everybody's in a different season of their life, but I find more and more people. I had a, I had a woman recently, uh, CEO of a, a large company in this community, and she just did not like her schedule. She had way too much... Th- too much activity, too much but not in. enough space. Mm. So instead of us talking about the X's and O's of eating and moving and whatever, we really worked on scheduling. Mm. Let's, let's take some of those meetings away. Let's carve out some time just for you. Yeah. And I asked her, I said, if you came in Monday, let's just say on Monday, you know, you have a busy day, but on Tuesday morning, you don't have to come in until 9 o'clock. How would you feel? She goes, I would feel stressed. I go, why? She says, because I think I need to be there. Hmm. So, so I said, imagine if you didn't have to be there, that you had your own time in the morning. And she started thinking about it. She goes, that would be incredible. I said, what if you did that on Tuesday? And then you did it on Thursday. Hmm. So two days a week, you don't have to come in until 9 o'clock. That would give you time to move your body. Yeah. That would have time for you to eat. That would have time for you to recover. Yeah. You, know, you could sleep in a little lo- longer. I said, you probably outperform your past schedule yeah. because you have better energy and it's much more sustainable in your love and life, right? Yeah. So that's a big thing to recognize today is, is your pace equal to your space? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And if it's not, then we need to maybe slow down in your pace and increase more space. Yeah. And as we wrap this up, as simple as we talked about it, but recognizing blind spots because we all have them yeah that's true so if i ask you rashawn what would be a blind spot you would have in your world from a health standpoint blind spot is there any blind spots like something i don't know something you don't know i always feel like i can learn something new so i would say that (laughs) yeah so i one thing i love about you is you have a lot of curiosity yeah and so you don't think you you think you have blind spots and many people don't. They don't even know it. That's when it's a problem. When you think you know it, that's when it becomes a problem. So when Stop I bring wrong. people in, in, when we do, especially when we do private training or even you know groups, I try to expose some blind spots. Hmm. I try to expose what's your balance. They're not even aware of it. They just know they, they don't have a good balance. Hmm. Or they don't have mobility. Or maybe they're not drinking water. That's a blind spot for many people. Hmm. Are you drinking 50 ounces of water a day? Many people, that's a blind spot. Another blind spot is, are they consuming an omega-3 fat, like the flax, chia, or cod liver oil? Mm. So now we look at blind spots in their eating. We look blind spots in their moving. You know, I had a guy in here the other day, and he, he's a big runner walker. Well, his blind spot is he doesn't have mobility, flexibility, balance, and strength. But he's working out regularly. He's mm. just not covering his blind spots. Because we all have them. And so I think that's the big takeaway today is that the body's always talking back to you. 
you need to learn how to listen. And as you mentioned earlier, we don't want to mask the problems. And then as we end, it's like, okay, what one thing can I do at a time? And um, what do I need to expose myself to? What, what's, what's causing the problem? You know, what, what is it? So when we're curious and asking those questions, you start revealing blind spots. I would have never known my blind spot, like just recently, it was I don't understand why my hamstring's not getting better. Mm. It's getting better, but it's taking long to, to heal, but it never really is fixing itself. Well, my back was my blind spot. So I needed to change some of the training things I was doing for that because I'm working on my mobility and my flexibility, but I didn't really, I wasn't really focusing on my back. Yeah. I had to write that stuff down. The blind spots. (laughs) Well, we, we all have them, right? Yeah. All right. So remember everybody, this is, uh, this is going to be a series and it's going to be called your health keeps score. And if you have any questions, You can reach out to us at ontargetliving.com. We're happy to help you. My direct email is my name, Chris Johnson, at ontargetliving.com. But if you have any questions, we have an amazing team. We have Rashawn, Mark, Matt, Kristen, Tab. So we have a really nice team here. Any parting shots, anything you want to say before we end? Uh, Before we end, here's my thing. Be intentional once again. I even learned that from you. Be intentional on your rest. Be intentional on... Uh, what you're consuming, be intentional on what you're watching, who you're listening to, who you're around. Everything comes with intentions, rather you know it or not. It's all subconscious. So just be intentional. And what intentional means is if you go wake up in the morning and the first thing you're doing is go on your phone, tomorrow wake up and be like, my intention today, I'm not going to be on my phone. I'm going to give myself some time. I'm going to, you know, speak good things over my life. Be intentional. Well, and again, you're intentional in the morning. Uh-huh. You're taking your shoes off. Staying in the grass, looking mm-hmm. at the sun. Yeah. That's intentional. Intentional for the future, honestly, yeah. Right. It's like you, you, you moving step by step, day by day to something very big. So. And I like what Rashawn sure. said at the end. It's just steps. So everybody don't feel like you have to do everything overnight. It's right. building habits. It's steps along the way. Yeah. And as I end here, mm-hmm. again, thanks for joining us today. Uh, share this with others. We have lots of good podcasts come out every week. Yep. This is going to be a series. And the tagline of my book, and this is what we truly believe, that you have the power to feel your best. We'll see you next time.